Hey everybody, I'm Rob Freeman and welcome back to Ensuring the Built Environment. Today we're answering the question, how did Babcock Ranch survive Hurricane Ian? Well, if you see the photos and video that are coming out or that came out about the damage that happened on the west coast of Florida near uh, Fort Myers, the damage from Hurricane Ian is really uh, incredible. The uh, certain areas of that area down by Fort Myers on the west coast near Sanibel look like they've been completely des destroyed. Uh, entire communities flattened. Um, the hurricane was a Category 4 hurricane, which uh, brought 150 mile an hour winds, massive flooding, uh, almost two feet of rain. Uh, a massive storm surge came through there and just wiped out entire communities. And so this is causing the insurance market down in Florida, which is already under incredible pressure with insurance carriers left and right going bankrupt, leaving the state because they aren't profitable. Uh, it's causing people's insurance rates in Florida to go through the roof. Uh, and this is just causing a massive focus on the concept of resilience in any new developments in areas where you have exposure to wind or flood or wildfire risk or any perils that you have to ensure specifically to take care of those types of risks. And uh, it's easy to, probably the easiest way to see the benefits of resilience or planning for resilience is to look at the difference between the area that was hit so hard by this hurricane and then another planned community about 12 miles northwest of the area where the hurricane made landfall. There's a, a community called Babcock Ranch, which is about 12 miles northwest of Fort Myers and Sanibel. That is a massive planned community that was designed, it's uh, almost the size or greater than, than the size of the island of Manhattan. It's capable of uh, accommodating 50,000 residents at this community, Babcock Ranch. It was designed to be a resilient uh, green community that would allow the residents of Florida to sidestep or avoid the worst exposures that uh, Florida has in terms of flooding and hurricane damage or high winds or other things like that, wildfire risks, that type of stuff. And so uh, if you look at pictures of Babcock Ranch, uh, the area is a huge, huge area, but it seems to have withstood Hurricane Ian with almost no damage. The residents at uh, Babcock Ranch apparently never lost power. They uh, kept their all their communications and electricity, and um, they really got by unscathed with almost no physical damage to their properties. And so this is causing insurance carriers to encourage people to focus on resilience. But what does resilience mean? Well, it's in in the, in, in the case of Babcock Ranch, there are really sort of three major things that. Uh, allowed that community to survive unscathed. The first is that they were built, the, the community was built uh, at 25 feet above sea level. And so that elevation really just saved them from the most of the, so the storm exposure, the storm surge exposure, the flooding. <clears throat> now that's not to say that you couldn't have massive flooding from wind because wind drives water. And so that's, that's going to cause problems. But that caused uh, that community to uh, be in much better condition than any other communities nearby. Now, another thing is that they build to a, a level of building code that exceeds the, net, the, the standard Florida building code standard, which is the Florida Green Building Coalition standard. Uh, there's the Florida building code, which is the bare minimum that you have to meet to get a CO, a certificate of occupancy. Uh, for your, your building to occupy your building. But then the Florida Green Building Coalition goes one level above uh, or many levels above the, that standard by encouraging uh, builders to incorporate uh, site-related improvements, water efficiency, energy efficiency, building materials uh, types that are uh, more resilient and durable and sustainable. Uh, encouraging more in, um, indoor environmental quality improvements, uh, using renewable energy. And so Babcock Ranch also benefits from having a uh, 150 megawatt solar farm that is adjacent to the community that powers it and provides energy back to uh, Florida Power and Light and to the neighboring communities. 
So of those 700,000 solar panels that make up that 150 megawatt solar farm, none of them were damaged by the wind. And so this is just really incredible to the, to the quality of the construction of that system that was built there. But all of, again, all the residents didn't lose power either. They were uh, benefiting from the, the infrastructure that was built all underground. None of the electricity or phone lines were built above ground, so they weren't exposed to the elements. And a lot of the um, way the community was built was designed with native and indigenous plantings, bioswales, other types of stormwater management practices that uh, now allow natural drainage to occur, that provide buffers if there is storm surge to absorb the, the additional amounts of water that come in. And this is just part of sort of a natural planning process which is designed to work with the natural habitat in the area where Babcock Ranch was designed. So. Beneath this video, I'll link to a bunch of resources that you can go and look and find out about resilient building and the Florida Green Building Coalition building code. And this is again, you know, the Florida Green Building Coalition code is related to the Leadership in Energy and Environmental Design lead building standard, which, you know, started in the late 90s. Uh, and really drove the uh, green building movement in North America. But um, that's a separate standard, but it is, you know, the Florida Green Building Coalition Code is just something you can refer to in terms of being a source for good resilience best practices. And uh, yeah, just, you know, check that out and check out all the interesting inf information about Babcock Ranch. So um, anyway, I uh, hope this was interesting and useful. Uh, again, it's terrible to see the contrast between the damage caused uh, where all the devastation happened and then the um, the way that Babcock Ranch was able to survive but I think it you know it emphasizes very easily to understand what insurance companies want you to do to plan where you're going to build and if you are looking to buy a home or build something you should take resiliency measures into account because you'll benefit from lower insurance costs uh, and then you won't have to deal with having to uh, rebuild if something comes through your area in terms of high winds or flood. So uh, anyway, uh, thanks again for watching. I hope this is helpful. And if you need to get in touch, please chant, uh, feel free to schedule an appointment with me at the link below this video, or you can go to robfreeman.com. Thanks again and have a great day.